you're not letter to my younger self congratulations on receiving this letter from the future it's great news because it means that 30 years from now you're not dead and presumably not in prison and also that time traveling email has been invented and yet you're so far in the past you don't even know what email is yet Email is like regular mail, but cheaper, faster, and with far, far greater power to wreck your day every day. <laughs> I am writing to you to give you advice for the next 30 years because my friend, and one day your friend, Gail Sobat, is paying me to do so. <laughs> and that is the first piece of advice. Write for pay. <laughs> Get paid. The sooner you make people pay you, the sooner you can make people pay you more. <laughs> Here is piece of advice number two, which is also about making money from writing. You don't need to research anything. I don't mean you don't need to read or find out neat stuff, but academics are working. That is to say, working, in quotation marks, several days a year to put out research papers filled with facts. Soon there will be a thing called search engines. They will not look anything like engines. Find, find those research papers, especially the ones that are about sex, violence, games, TV, kids, weight loss, and making money. Find the most credible papers with the most controversial claims. Interview the people who wrote them. They will be among the loneliest people in the world and they will be happy to speak to you for hours at a time. <laughs> They will say so much, you may not even have to read their papers. Then find a bunch of weirdos whose lives match some of the claims from those papers. Then write a book that will be like a set of short stories plus essays. It will be the literary equivalent of a Reese's peanut butter cup. Then title it something like The Tipping Point, Outliers, or Blink. There is a dude who will do this. And by 2016, he will have $30 million. What does he have that you don't have? The answer is a lot of hair. That brings me to piece of advice number three. You are 17 years old and have the most beautiful hair that has ever existed. It's like a full stage production of Jesus Christ Superstar. Except that Carl Anderson, who played Judas in the movie, is playing Jesus, and it's all on your scalp every day. That stage production will start to lose audience and cast members within the next three years. And within ten years, you really are just going to have to fire everyone and close the doors. So my advice is, ignore everyone who says that within ten years, there will be something to regrow hair. It isn't happening. I've waited those ten years three times in a row. There will be no drug, no gene therapy, no nanotechnology, no holograms, and no female hair projection hypnosis. You will need to find something called Rogaine. It will not regrow your hair, but it will let you keep what you have. And if you start taking it at age 17, by age 47, you will look like Shaft. <laughs> However, that hair will mostly be gray and white. The good news is, you can dye hair, you can't dye air. <laughs> While we're on the topic of appearance, let's go to a piece of advice number four. Lift weights. You're 17 and you weigh about 10 reams of paper and you have four more years to reach your adult height. If you start lifting weights now, you'll have awesome muscles for life that require only maintenance and a healthy diet to continue attracting women. <laughs> Some might tell you that any woman who's drawn to you because she sees your muscles isn't worth knowing, not even biblically knowing. But it is easier to attract a woman using your extensive knowledge of Star Trek and awesome pecs and biceps than with your extensive knowledge of Star Trek alone. I'm just kidding, you already know to shut up about Star Trek. 30 years from now, it won't be much better, but you will be able to talk about Marvel superheroes and Star Wars, go figure, and Disney will own them all. <laughs> that leads to piece of advice number five, buy Disney stock. <laughs> In fact, find out what index funds are and buy those. Yes, you have good reason to critique capitalism and seek to replace it with a more just system that doesn't make billions for the few through the exploitation of the many, 
but just between us, everyone else is doing it. <laughs> For instance, in 10 years, you'll buy your first house. It will be cheap, $89,000, which is super mega awesome cheap in the year 2016, and it'll be right next to the university. <laughs> buy the houses on either side. I know it sounds nuts to buy a second or third house either side next door, but as you'll discover if you don't, then every character from the Trailer Park Boys will move in next to you. <laughs> the Trailer Park Boys is a TV show about all the people you went to junior high with who grew up and didn't change. <laughs> and eventually, those neighbors will literally burn down one of those two houses. <laughs> Real estate prices will rise, and if you own even one of those two other houses, you'll earn so much money that you'll be able to build a real time machine and go back and buy every house on the block. <laughs> and then you can sell those and build a bigger time machine and go back and prevent the original Star Trek from being canceled. <laughs> Advice number six is a few don'ts. Don't turn off people's monitors, even though they're wasting electricity, because they will try to get you fired. Don't tell people not to idle their cars or stick a banana in their tailpipe to cause their cars to stall like Eddie Murphy did in Beverly Hills Cop. They will hate it for the inconvenience as well as for the Freudian implications. Don't ever even suggest what people should or should not drink or eat. Why not? Because you are telling people what should enter one of their orifices and they do not like that. <laughs> Advice number seven is accept that you are an introvert. You like performing, and applause, and laughter, but that doesn't mean you're an extrovert. It means you're like plenty of performing artist introverts. You will hate nightclubs. You will hate after-hours clubs. You will hate stag parties. You will hate bush parties, and other than after grad, you will never go to another one again. In fact, you will hate parties, period. You won't like company socials, or couples nights, or some horrible thing called dinner parties. You will never be the hub of a space station of socializing. You will be like Soyuz meeting Skylab. You will love one-to-one -one conversation. So accept that. And when someone invites you to a party, counteroffer, dinner, or a night of fun, and you'll be the better for it. That segues to number eight about dating. You will have many first dates, and mostly they will be awful. When dating, listen to every crazy piece of nonsense that your date says and believe her. If she tells you on the second date that she, quote, hates men, end quote, believe her, because she does, especially you, which is why apparently she's dating you. If she blames her father repeatedly, she will blame you repeatedly. Do not even try to be a savior because you cannot save people who want you to save them. Do not confuse being valuable with being loved. In fact, do not even confuse being loved with being loved. You love a good hamburger you will not marry it. And when you're done with it, it will be in worse shape and smell terrible. When you inevitably break up or she dumps you, you heard that right. Take the hottest baths you can stand, pay for the occasional massage, not that kind, and stay as pos busy as possible with friends while having fun. Do not discuss your failed relationship. The faster you stop talking about it, the sooner you'll stop thinking about it. Number nine, whom to marry. Do not even think about marrying that one, or 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 that one. Marry the one named Michelle. Not the first Michelle, also not other Michelle, or Michelle from junior high. But the Michelle where after the first date you'll say, not this one. Turns out she's the one. <laughs> You will know she's the right one because when you've been dating for three months, you'll get really, really intimate. By which I mean, you'll show her John Carpenter's 1982 feature, The Thing, and she will love it. <laughs> That's not a symbol. I really mean the film. And finally, number 10, listen. You've spent 10 years trying to be great at speaking. Spend the rest of your life getting better at listening. Not only will it open vast and lucrative opportunities for extortion, but you'll be a better writer, son, friend, boyfriend, teacher, husband, and father. And when people are boring, learn to dissociate while nodding with a furrowed brow and the occasional quiet yet knowing chuckle. <laughs> the person talking will never know the difference, just as you can't tell the difference with your audiences. Thank you.
because isn't this fun? <laughs>